we're going to talk about me and RH Max. We both really, uh, Richard Hart has changed our lives, not just because he created an awesome crypto, but because he has some really good life, self-help kind of entrepreneurial advice, which surprisingly, I guess not surprisingly, I don't know. I think a lot of people don't realize that. Maybe they haven't gone back and seen his early videos. They haven't read Cybive, which I haven't read the whole thing. I read the beginning, but I was reading it on my phone. I need to listen. No excuses. I need to listen to the audio. Uh, so I'm so sorry. But uh, I have I know it's probably really awesome. I think he has another book too. Um, Mend the World or something. Change the World. Uh, fix the World. Fix the World. Mm-hmm. And then Naval is someone who really changed my life. I think I found Naval first out of Richard Hart, Alex Hermosi, who's the other guy we're going to talk about. I found Naval first and it was a friend of mine. You know, it's one of my best friends. I talked to him. We, we always talk about like life stuff, I guess. And I was always telling him, Oh man, you know, I don't want a, a job. I want to do my own thing. I want to find a way I feel like with the internet, you could really do anything these days. And he was like, Hey, you should check out this guy, Naval. Um, You, it sounds like a lot of what you're saying kind of aligns with what he says. And I was like, Oh, okay. So he sent me Naval on Joe Rogan. That was the first Naval interview I listened to. And I was like, I was like, Whoa, this guy is saying like exactly what I'm kind of thinking. I really like this. The Joe Rogan is fantastic. That's that's for the for the normie, for the average person, like that is the best introduction ever to Naval. And because it goes over a lot of his core concepts and you get a taste of them, you know, in the limelight with with Joe Rogan. But there's a ton, I mean, have hundreds of hours of other content, Clubhouse when that was exploding. But yeah, Joe Rogan, everyone. If you if you want an introduction to Naval, like Ben said, that's a great episode. He posted in the chat, actually. <laughs> yeah, and if you all reach me. If you wrench me too, I can post links because I noticed it didn't post a link to the sci-vibe that I threw in there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I was going to throw some links in there while we're talking, if, if you don't mind. Cool. Yeah, man. And then I'll try to add them to the description too. Let's see. Add moderator. Nice. All right, so yeah. Um, and then the thing that really changed my life with the well, I guess we can talk about that later. But next, we have Alex Hermosi, who another friend of mine, he's the most recent guy I found out about. Um, and apparently, so Alex Hermosi, I think he went from like no subscribers to over a hundred thousand in like a couple months or something. He, he blew up really fast and he was just filming these videos kind of like in a closet in a way, which we'll kind of show you a little later. Um, but he was giving this great business advice and he basically went from like sleeping on the floor of a gym to making like a hundred million in sales a year kind of thing. Like, and he has this really interesting story, but he just has some of the best advice for life. And for, I don't know if you're trying to be a self starter kind of entrepreneur person. Um, so yeah, I think this stream yeah. is going to be really fun. I'm really excited. And I think there's really no structure. We're just going to kind of wing it and talk about what we liked about these three guys, what content has helped us the most. And uh, we can kind of share and just kind of talk about it. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I think I can give a, a quick, uh, like, roundup of why I even came across following these uh, these three gentlemen because th- I think each of them really hits to a specific vertical in my life. Uh, Richard, it was crypto. He was, you know, started following Richard 2017. Uh, that was when I'd, I just got into crypto 2016. So this is a perfect, you know, passive mentor, somebody to follow, somebody to watch, somebody to learn from for crypto in general. And then, of course, it became, oh, wow, okay, he's starting his own token. And, you know, this guy's really smart. I wonder if it'll work. We'll see. And that kind of led me into the wealth part of, like, wow, I can actually become financially free. This is happening. People are doing it. And this guy has a plan. And uh, that's, like, opened my eyes to the wealth side of it. And then Naval came after that. Uh, Price started following Naval 2020-ish, somewhere through there. I came across him. I have no idea how I came across him. But I think I was just searching for... Uh, yeah, I was just searching for self-help stuff or just mindset uh, stuff, things like that. Came across Naval and just started going through all this content. Uh, I saw Joe Rogan is a great podcast. I just basically, like when I find somebody that I love listening to and I want to consume their content, I mean, that's what I do. I find somebody that's really smart that I believe can help me and I'll go and I'll just find every interview they ever did. I'll go find every clubhouse, every, uh, you know, every podcast they did, just every stream they appeared on. And I will just watch everything and just, you know, you'll get a lot of the same stories, but you also, 
they tell the story differently. You'll get different details. People ask different questions. So I basically started consuming everything in the ball. And that was uh, like for probably a year or two, that was just, I mean, his book, the the almanac of Naval Ravikant to this day, I hate to, it's between that and Sci-Vive. I think for the average person, like Sci-Vive is kind of like mission driven. And I mean, it's a fantastic book, but it's sort of, you got to be, I think all these things, you have to be in the mindset. You have to be ready to consume it, to get anything out of it. But the Almanac of Naval Ravikant, one of my favorite books of all time, I recommend it to anyone, no matter what they're doing, uh, because it really helps you get that shift of what you, like, like w- figuring out what you want to do. And I think that's the hardest thing for people to do in life is like what you really want to do. And it changes from time to time, but, and you may pick the wrong thing, but like being able to get down to the, like, what is it that you want to get? How do you define success for yourself? How do you get it? What things are possible? Just opening your mind to all these concepts and, and ways to do it. Huge thing I got from Naval. And then more recently, Alex Ramosi, probably for the last, now I was talking to Jake Sharp, credit him for uh, indirectly introducing me to him because he mentioned him on stream. I had Jake Sharp for the first time on the show, maybe six months ago, five, six months ago. And he was just, he just passively said, you know, Alex Ramosi says, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, that sounds really good. And he maybe mentioned an, another time and he said something. And then after the stream, when I was clipping it up, I thought, man, who's that guy that he was talking about? You know, he said something interesting. I want to look him up. And I just typed in, you know, Alex Ramosi and started what's, watching some of his content. And I saw him, you know, I saw him after he already blew up. He was already like, you know, going on every podcast, every interview, everybody wanted to talk to him. And then from him, it's just about this guy like, getting over yourself. Like he has this amazing story that you alluded to around just being able, you know, he was broke, you know, he, he thought about suicide. He uh, just was in a really dark place. And then he, you know, found a, a partner who was just like with him thick and thin, his, his wife, uh, Layla. And he just built this business and just acquired these skills. And he's driven, you know, by this, uh, you know, you can, you can go listen to his content, you know, his father, he was always like trying to do what his father wanted to do. And then he decided like he needed to do what he wanted to do and nothing's ever good enough. And that really drove him. So even to this day, even last night, like I'll fit, sometimes I'll finish out before I go to bed, listening to some part of an Alex Hermosi interview, uh, because I haven't consumed all of his content yet. I'm still going through it, but he's so inspirational and so good to just put you on this track of just understanding, like how do you get over yourself, how to get past that, that threshold or that heel, that, that, that belief that, that belief you need to overcome. I love how he talks about how he'll say, um, you know, somebody will say something. Oh, I believe that marriage is a compromise. You know, this is one thing that he said on the Ice Coffee podcast. And he's like, well, that's a belief, though. That's not that's just, you know, one thing that you've you've said you believe. And that's different for everyone. Uh, but, you know, that's a belief. So I didn't find beliefs versus uh, reality and what works for you. And a lot of those things. He's really good at just pushing the message through and uh, getting you motivated to start your own business, do sales. Uh, why? Uh, more importantly, creating value. He's, you know, you can cheat and you can scam people or you can develop a product or a service that you can maximize the value and actually make it a win-win. And you can, you can get rich by not scamming people, but by creating value, which harkens back to Richard and all the products from that too. So that's kind of my introduction to those three started with Richard, uh, went to Naval and now I'm on Alex from kick, still trying to consume all the content. But I still go back and forth between them all because those three have been the pillars of like shaped the way I think about, you know, what I want to do, life, business, uh, you know, health, wealth, happiness, all that sort of stuff more than anyone else in the last five or six years. Nice. Yeah. I, I kind of feel the same way. Um, I think Naval's, so Naval's podcast he has called How to Get Rich. That was one that I found, you know, I listened to him on Joe Rogan. I listened to him on this other guy. I forget his name. He's a popular podcaster. Um, but then the how to get rich thing, it's four hours, but I used to listen to it on repeat. Like I not like sitting there listening to it, but like, for example, I'd go to this place where I was living at the time and it was a walk. It was called the river walk. You kind of walk through nature. And anytime I went to walk, I'd put it on and then I'd listen to like two hours of it and then I'd pause it. And then, Maybe I'd come back a few days later and I'd do it again. And it was something I listened to just over and over. And what was really life-changing, I think, about that podcast was him, kind of like you said with um, Hermosi, a big point of that podcast was like ethical wealth creation. Like 
there's something in our society these days that's like if you're rich or evil if you're rich you had to step on people to get there if you're rich you had to take advantage of people to get there uh like we should you know be angry at rich people <laughs> like you're so feel weird. guilty if you have money like this kind of mentality is kind of especially in like a college setting too which is what i was finishing up at the time i was finishing college and i was like because i've like grown up really enjoying money really enjoying the idea of entrepreneurship but then i'd kind of fallen into this idea of like yeah you know right you're taking advantage of people to get money but then listening to that uh was really i was like wow uh this is awesome and he has so many good tips in there um you know, like a lot of his good quotes, like playing long-term games with long-term people, find a emerging, and it all just, I feel like this whole podcast really pushed me into cryptocurrency because he's like, find an emerging industry, uh, you know, that's at the beginning and and find a long-term game with long-term people and create a personal brand to like, you know, uh, help people, provide a service that's helping people. It's like, I have no, and you think of things so logically, like I have no beef with the grocery store if i'm paying them like five bucks for some food because i want the food like it's a fair trade-off so like you can start some kind of business or service and like there's no nothing evil or taking advantage about it when people are like happily exchanging the money for the service or the good uh and it was like thinking about it so logically and clearly like that was like huh um have you listened to the how to get rich naval four hour thing I'm sure oh, yeah. you have. Yeah, that was, I think that was, that may have been one of the first things I've, I read or I listened to of him was the How to Get Rich Without Getting Lucky. That's like his most popular uh, deal other than Joe Rogan. And yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sure I've listened to it more than once. But the thing I, when you said that, it reminded me that I used to listen to the book, his audio, uh, the, the Almanac and Naval Ravi Khan, the audiobook version. I think I've literally listened to it five or six times. Cause I, I would finish it and I would just be like, all right. Like I literally used to fall asleep listening to it uh, sometimes. It, it was, it's just so good and so peaceful and just like thought provoking, but at the same time comforting uh, just, just a lot of the stuff that he talks about in it. And that just wraps up. He didn't write the book. It's he got uh, another guy wrote the book based on a lot of the content he's produced, a lot of the tweets. Like he just basically, this guy loved his content so much that he asked him all like, Hey, can I just take a bunch of your tweets expound on them you know and you can be you can edit it you can like you know give the okay here and there and i want to publish a book and so naval has nothing to do with the book other than i'm sure you know he signed off on it he doesn't make any money from it uh it's fantastic so like all that value is out there and uh like i said that's one of my favorite books of all time huh man i didn't know that about about that book um yeah i haven't i haven't read it my same friend who put me on the naval has you know, recommended it to me, but I'll have to check that out next. But yeah, that was a big theme of the how to get rich uh, for our podcast, which another thing to note is that the title is a bit of a bait where the real he he goes into detail on the on the podcast that it's more how to create wealth, not how to get rich, but how to be wealthy. Um, yeah. And then what does being rich mean to you? And that's I think he uses that infamous quote, the a house full of love, a kind like a fit body and like a sound mind. You have to earn those. You can't buy them. And how yeah. like you know, Naval he says, oh, I know, and this is kind of a cliche you hear people say it all the time. But like, oh, I know rich people who are miserable, and you know, I know poor people who are happy. But it's like it's super duper true. But I what I really loved also about it was he talks about the different kinds of luck and how there's like four kinds. I can't remember them all, but like one of the really unique examples was like, you're someone who's a deep sea diver and you're like the best deep sea diver ever. And maybe people your whole life were like well, deep sea diving, stupid. Why would you do that? You know, you're not going to make a lot of money doing that or whatever. But then someone finds buried treasure or they find like a, a shipwreck with treasure and they're like, wow, how can we get this treasure? Hey, let's talk to this guy who's like a great diver and then we'll give them some of the loot. And it's like, that's the kind of luck where like you focused on a skill that you wanted your whole life or that you loved. And then all of a sudden it just works out. And then there's the type of luck where you're running around, stirring up so much dust. You're just doing stuff, doing stuff, doing stuff. And then all of a sudden the opportunity just comes to you and people look at people and they say, Oh, well that's so lucky. Uh, you know, someone could be involved in the crypto space, do a lot of research, take a lot of time. 
have their security correct, have everything right and get a good investment and make a lot of money. But to the outside person, to like the kind of zero sum game person who's attacking wealth creation, it's another good point Naval makes where like wealth creation is a positive sum game. And the people who are attacking wealth creation are playing the zero sum game of status. They're trying to gain status by attacking the wealthy. Um, it's super interesting. Basically, those are the kinds of people who look at the people who get, you know, lucky uh, and just kind of criticize them. Yeah. yeah. That, that always makes me cringe when people look at rich people or anyone successful and say, oh, well, you know, uh, that, that'd be nice or something. Or like, oh, you know, obviously they got lucky. It's like, uh, my, my, I think my favorite response to that, and this may, might have came from the ball too, adapted in some way, but you make your own luck. Like there's this, there's this actually a mental model around this luck surface area. And your luck surface area, you can increase it by being sensitive to opportunities and putting yourself in good positions to take advantage of such things. So if you're in an environment where, you know, it's hard to invest, you, you know, you're broke, you don't have any money, you're not, you don't have any friends who are successful, uh, you're not looking for uh, a way out of your nine to five. If you don't, if you're not doing those type of things, your luck surface area is minimized. It's very small. So even if you come across, even if someone comes up to you and says, hex.com, say yourself, uh, you'll be like, oh, no scam, you know, because you haven't maximized your luck surface area because you haven't even put yourself in the mindset to understand what these opportunities look like. Uh, but I think that's the biggest thing about, yeah, sure. You could say it's luck, but it, it's, it's like 90% putting your increasing your luck surface area and maybe 10% of this opportunity you came across actually, you know, was legit worked out, but you could never even get there without your luck surface area being larger uh, instead of everyone else's, which is, you know, usually very tiny because you know, they're on their, they're in their own little bubble and they're not being sensitive to such things. So yeah, I cringe every time somebody says that, or they call rich people greedy. It's like, I talked about this last night. Like what is the most unhelpful I don't even know how to use the word greedy anymore to be useful <laughs> because I always just hear, Oh, rich people. Like I'll post a TikTok of, you know, RH, one of the ones ABIT has. And some of the comments are like, you know, greedy, greedy as F. And I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, what, what do you mean greedy? Like you don't know anything about this guy and you just see him wearing fancy clothes and talking about rich stuff. And you say greedy, what does that even mean? Like how do you even use that in the modern day to, to be useful? <laughs> like, is that like you, you tell kids like, share your toys. Don't be greedy. Is that like a good way to do it? I don't know how, how adults use greedy to benefit, uh, or to be useful anymore. It's just it's so overused to, to make, to bash on rich people. Yeah, it is. It is interesting. And what was really a mind scramble for me was, uh, this is Robert Kiyosaki, rich dad, poor dad, but kind of similar to everything is he says, you know, greedy people, they want a lot for doing a little. And if you look at, uh, you know, he says poor people are greedy because they don't bring much value to society, but they want all the the value that comes, you know, with that. So like, you know, Jeff Bezos, whatever. I love Amazon. The fact that you can get a package delivered in two days is pretty incredible. Like that's that's nuts. You can get anything in the world on your phone within two days. Some places you get it the same day. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. that is insane. Yet there's this weird even people who use amazon they they hate on jeff oh oh i can't believe it oh i can't believe this guy i hate him so much oh he is it's like dude he brought that service that incredible service that we all use you know it's got a streaming service it's got audiobooks it's got all this crazy stuff that's actually like i guess people take for granted or something it's like he's the one who like pioneered and and made that made that what it what it is basically yeah you know, he had employees who help him and they get paid too but it's like that's how it works you know like he created yeah. the, the thing like <laughs> that money you're yeah. paying in those packages like it's such a convenient thing of course like he's like should he be poor for doing that then what incentive is there for someone to go create the next awesome thing that we love and uh and use yeah, so. exactly. And, and that's not, it's not that you're making an excuse for, there, there's plenty of, there's no perfect corporation. There's no, I mean, I guess you could say there's no good corporation. Corporations, even though they're illegally treated as people, blah, 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 they're, they're not good or bad, really. They're just, you know, they, they act upon incentives for shareholders. They want to increase profit. Their duty is to do that. Uh, you know, the government can put certain restrictions and those can be helpful to, to incentivize them in certain ways and can also be harmful to, 
innovation and profits and stuff too. There's a lot of nuance around. Yeah, Amazon is an incredible company that provides a ton of value, and they deserve to be you know top market cap. Jeff Bezos deserves to be a you know trillion billionaire. Um, and w- you can say that without washing away, you know, of course, have they did shady stuff before? Yeah, probably. Have they did, you know, uh, do they work employees too hard? Have they ruined people's lives? Yeah, probably. But they've created a ton of value and you can't just like push that all to the side and just hate on them for all this stuff and ignore all the good things they've created too. Um, so yeah, prime amazing invention. They revolutionized cloud. Uh, and, um, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's one of those things people complain about iPhones, you know, but they, they, Oh, we need stricter labor laws. Well, you know, everything's made in China and they got nets over there in the factories. So, but you're still buying the iPhone, aren't you? You know, it's, you can't reason. It's not like even a little reasoning you can have with, uh, with people that like just want to focus on that because it's not reasoning. It's not logic. It's not judgment. It's just feelings and emotions. And, you know, they, they want something to happen that's not happening and they, they don't understand why. And they don't want to put it in the effort to understand the real situation and have perspective um, which, you know, perspective is one of the hardest things you, you could ever have. Like that's, that's one of the skills, I think judgment and perspective from the ball, especially I picked up. If you can just, anytime you don't understand why people do a certain thing, put yourself in their shoes, like literally be like, I'm that person. Why would I make this decision? And there's so many verticals that that can help you understand. Uh, you know, it can help you come up with even your own business plans. Like, Oh, why, why, why would I buy this product or what product do I need as a, average person who, you know, works at retail, whatever. And then you can come up with business ideas too, but everybody's just like in their own shell. And uh, once you can come out of that and uh, look at the world in a way of these are people, they act based on the incentives, uh, rewards and punishment, all that stuff. The IRS tax system, it's, it's an incentive structure. They incentivize, they don't want everyone just buying houses and flipping houses all the time. And everyone just like, we just become a country that's just House and you just have real estate and all the other businesses and all the other uh, like nobody innovates because we could just buy houses and do that. No, they want to like incentivize small business owners and LLCs and they want to uh, make people invest in properties and develop land. So it's all an incentive structure at the end of the day, which for better or for worse, uh, it pushes you in one direction or the other. Yeah, I think that was a good point. Like, yeah, I mean, it's like so much these days is put into like black and white. Like it's either this or it's this. And it's, that's a great point where like, yeah, there's plenty of things you could criticize Amazon for. No one's perfect. Nothing's perfect. Like everything is so more, you know, nuanced or whatever, like, and, and, and like you said, like, okay, let's play the, I'm, I'm upset at this, at this thing game. Like, oh, you know, how is my phone being created? Like you said, oh, my t-shirt, where was this created? Like at the end of the day, it's like you can either worry about all this stuff all the time or just kind of like focus on yourself. And I don't know. It's like, it's like you could play that game endlessly of like, I'm upset at how this is made. I'm upset at this. I'm upset at this. So it's like at the end of the day, every, everything is, is like that to, to a certain extent. Um, Yeah. And you can respond with, okay, I'm not going to buy iPhones. Okay. I'm not going to eat meat. Okay. I'm not going to do this or that. Well, it, this this you it's kind of like voting does one vote count eh, not really but if everyone believed that then you know it would make a big difference but if it's just you individually doing certain things and you hope one day to make a movement out of it it's a lot of hopium uh and you're just really just going to handicap yourself in the short term and probably long term as well uh but i wanted to uh if you want to share a screen i have a few in the ball quotes pulled up uh, if, if, uh, oh you know, oh cool i see that throw them up yeah right. So the first one that you talked of, yeah, a fit, a fit body, a calm mind, a house full of love. These things cannot be bought. They must be earned. One of the, one of the best quotes. Uh, that's super, super meaningful. Yeah. That's helped me kind of like shape my life in a way continuing. I mean, yeah. yeah d- desire is a contract you make with yourself to be unhappy to get what you want. That's what really made me understand desire. Like I never thought about it that way. It was one of those aha <laughs> moments of wow. I forgot that's, about that one. That's what it means. Like it means if you desire something, you make a contract <laughs> with yourself to be unhappy until you get it. So be careful. If you, it's okay to have desires. We're human beings. It's, it's what Naval says. But be careful how many you have and what they are, because you know what's going to happen until you get it. 
And then let's see, I'll just, go, I'll just pick out a few and feel free to jump in on any of them. I'm just going to go through and look for a few of my favorite too. Sure. All right. I mean, really, if you're, you know, a white collar worker, for example, I really like this one. It it's, speaks to me of 40 hour work weeks are a relic of the industrial age. Knowledge workers function like athletes, train and sprint, rest and reassess. Uh, it's exactly you know my my day to day pretty much. Yeah, he has another quote. It's like the same thing he says: "Work like a lion." How humans were naturally carnivores. Um, we're not built to be like cows and graze all day, eating grass all day, which is how society has kind of created us. So go to your cubicle or go to your job and just work all work. Do a little bit of work all throughout the day we're like lions where you lay around and relax and then then you go out and you charge and work hard and get that kill and it's more like uh you once you get that burst you rest and you relax and you de-stress and then you get that burst of inspiration and then you just like go hard kind of like that quote says you sprint uh sprint on the ideas exactly yeah i think it's like uh train like a lion and then like rest like something else. But, but yeah, like you said, the ideal is, uh, I don't know what the, the, the modern term work hard, play hard. Right. <laughs> you kind of related <laughs> to that too. Wiz Khalifa. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Wiz Khalifa. Um, I like this. This is like good for kind of like relaxing anxiety <laughs> stuff. Don't take yourself so seriously. You're just a monkey with a plan. Uh, which reminds me of, he also says, uh, there are no adults. Everyone's just making it up as they go. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, so good. It's true. Yeah. It really is. Like it's, it's true in a lot of ways. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, there's a lot of good ones. Uh, this is just listing a few. I, again, listening to hundreds of hours of these guys, it's just like, I have some of these quotes on my wall. This is a, this is probably one of my favorite ones. The only true test of intelligence is if you get what you want out of life. It's mm. just, he just synthesizes this <laughs> down to like the most simple, meaningful group of words. And I'm like, that is true. Like you, you don't want to get in the rabbit hole of, you know, uh, you know, this person is not successful. Well, uh, how do they define success? Do, do you think they're successful? Does it make them successful? What about their inner, their inner scorecard? Do they feel successful? Do they not feel like you go down this whole rabbit hole of like, Oh, it's based on success is how you define it. All these things. You can get rid of that. Just look at this. If you want to look and see if someone's intelligent, are they getting what they want out of life? Maybe they want to work nine to five and they're happy with that. If that's that's their, they could be intelligent by measuring it the way that uh, if that's what they really want to do. Now you could say, is that really what they want to do? Or is that what they're, they think they want to do because they don't have an open mind to all these other possibilities, but it gets rid of all these objective trying to measure its success objectively and intelligence objectively. It's like, no, if you're wanting, if you get what you want out of life, then you can call yourself intelligent. And that's huge motivation for me as well. Nice. This one's interesting. I think also either Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger says something similar. Uh, the most dangerous things are heroin and monthly salary. Yeah. I like, I like that one. That's one I've, yeah. I've had like in my brain. Yep. And then the escape yeah. competition through authenticity. That's a really good one. Yes. Um, it's very cool. That, that's what I've tried to bring to even you know, my channel, my brand, RH Maximalist. Like I, I, it's, I, I am authentic. And I don't have this whole principles about not monetizing. And I don't want to sell you anything. And I just want to bring value to the community. Um, who can compete with me? Who can compete with you, Ben? Like if you have your own brand and you have your own principles and, and you go with that, nobody can compete with you if you're authentic. And you, you know, it's, they may compete in the category, but they can't be a better you if you're true to yourself. That's what it means to me. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. I really like put the, puts things into perspective, and that's one thing I try to always remember is like my only competition is myself. Am I being am I better than I was yes a week ago? Like you know, whatever time yeah. frame you want, but I'm always trying to think that because it's easy to get caught up in these competition games, I guess, with people. Um, and maybe that's good sometimes as you, you, I don't know, you look at someone and you're like, oh, they're doing this amount of work. Let me get motivated to, to do my own kind of work. But uh, I really like, really like that quote. It kind of gives you, I don't know, helps give me that perspective back of like, 
I don't know. You could think of it like going to the gym. You see the buff guy in the gym and you feel like crap, but you're like, wait a second. I look yeah. better than I did a month ago because I've been working out consistently. And that's all that matters. Because if you're sitting just in life, if you're sitting there looking at all these other people and what everyone else is doing, there's always someone cooler than you. There's always someone stronger than you. There's always someone richer than you. Like there's always someone better than you. And that's all subjective anyway. Um, Cause who's, who's there, who's deciding that. So it's, yeah, it's almost like that quote just kind of like encapsulates all of that, I think in a way. Yeah. It's, and you know, if I see somebody who, you know, bodybuilder, first of all, I'm like, eh, they can have it. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I think I'm strong enough. But if I am in a position where I think, oh, I could be, you know, actually that reminds me, I should be more, more in shape. You know, this, this guy, you know, I, I, it's, it, I try to think about it in a healthy way. Not that I want to be that person, but I want to adapt. Like, what are they doing that I can uh, make myself better? Uh, like, what are they doing? I can like, I can take and use myself. And that comes back to uh, just the, the wealth assets uh, you earn while you sleep too. And all, you know, the products we're involved in. It's, I don't, I don't yep. think you can be the best version of yourself unless you own your own time. And that's the, like, as a, as a person who wants to be like, I want to fulfill my potential. I want to be the best version I can possibly be in myself uh, in a lot of different verticals without owning my own time. I can't do that. So I have to get that out of the way that super motivates me, you know, to become, you know, uh, mega wealthy. So I can, for myself, and my people and, and everyone around me that I can help. I think the gift of or the, or the ability, whether you, it's, a, it's a gift or whether you do it yourself, the ability to become the best version of yourself and the drive to want that, it's just one of the most, the greatest things uh, I feel like I can do in my life. Uh, and, you know, that's at a base level, of course, there's all kinds of other like tangible things you can do, but just at the base level, owning your own time, how do you do that? Crypto's given us an amazing opportunity to, to, to do that, to stick with it, have a game plan, and then do whatever we want uh, after that. Continue doing the same thing, do something different, and create value in the world. Uh, but you, you can't, to me, you can't achieve your full potential unless you own your time. And you got you to gotta become rich to do that. That is, yeah, that is really cool. And it's like Naval and her, Alex Hermosi, they give this great advice and like business, you know, become your own brand, start your own business this kind of thing. But then Richard Hart is so unique in that I feel like he understands crypto so much better and he's been involved in it and he's involved directly, obviously, his own projects. He he kind of puts it, lays it out like, hey, it used to be starting your business was the best thing to do. Uh, but now, like actually, the best ROI can really be cryptocurrency. And I feel like, you know, probably both of us is like, we're kind of like, well, at least in my head, I'm like, well, why not both? You know, because with the internet and starting kind of an online like brand, the long term, you know, I don't know. I mean, you don't really make much money now, but the long term, it's kind of like the opportunity is there, you know, long term games, long term people. And like, I don't know, it's like you can yeah. invest in crypto and then it costs, it really doesn't cost much to just turn on a camera and talk, you know, obviously equipment can cost money and that stuff, but yeah, just, it's interesting how Richard Hart, Naval and Alex, Marzo, they have a similar mindset and message, but Richard Hart is kind of has like branched out and I feel like he's a little ahead of the game and he's like, Hey, well, uh, actually cryptocurrency is like the best thing right now. If you're someone who only has a couple I don't know, hundred thousand bucks. I guess it, it's different for everyone, but yeah, yeah. And, and before we move on to, and we'll go on to to, to Richard and Alex uh, Hermosi too. But I just want to say this one: be careful when you get red pilled. Um, it can be very frustrating <laughs> if uh, once you have a taste of freedom, once you see the path in front of you, where it's once you see that it's obvious, like this is going to happen. You know, if you if you have the game plan, you're in the right ecosystem, all that stuff. Uh, be careful because it can be very frustrating until you get there because you, you, the first step is to buy into the idea that you don't need to work for the rest of your life. You can own your own time. You can be financially free. Once you get over that hump and you've been, you know, red pilled, for example, then you're not going to work, want to work very much anymore. You're, you're not going to want to do your nine to five as much. You're not going to, you know, you're going to be focused on and trying everything you can uh, to, to achieve the goal that you set out that you saw the path in front of you that you want to get to. So, it, it's it's not free 
once you once you get yourself past that point, it's not free, but it's worth it. Uh, I, I truly believe it. And I'll just uh, show the book here too and drop it in the chat. Nice. Uh, again, one of the, probably my favorite book between this and Sci, my favorite book of all time. Let's do it five or six times. Um, and you get on Amazon, super cheap. It's like 15 bucks or something. Well worth it. Uh, you can download it for free. Like they just give it away too. I just like the book. Oh, cool. It's really nice, really nice cover. <clears throat> and the audiobook, of course. Uh, I'm sure the audiobook's on YouTube as well. So you don't really need to pay for it, but it's worth paying for if you you know want to support uh, the, the mission and stuff. So, cool. Then, uh, yeah, do you want to talk about uh, Alex or Richard next? Um, let's go to Alex and then wind on Richard. Okay. So I wonder if he has a website. No, acquisition.com, but I wonder if he has a... Yeah, like I was Alex just going to pull up his, his YouTube and... Yeah, okay, I'll stop sharing and I'll let you uh, do that. Then. Okay. Um, I'll share my screen. He's also jacked too, which is very... Uh, very uh, it's funny him, him and Layla yeah. both are very uh, very attractive people very uh, good looking people <laughs> uh, i think that helps with their brand yeah so one video i don't know this is a pretty interesting one he talks about how like people they trap themselves in these kind of like oh i have to do this and if they i don't have this thing early in the morning like you create a routine and then it's like if you don't get that exact perfect routine uh you just, your day is ruined and you just don't do any work. Um, and it's like, people think there's all these things they should be doing, but then like, you know, it's really more like nuance than that. Um, there's one where it was like, there's, I'm trying to think of uh, the, some of, some of the best. I mean, there's so many, man. I feel like if you looked at my, my life <laughs> playlist of Alex Ramosi, it's just like, I think I watch a video of him, or at least part of one. I'd say I watch 10 to 15 minutes of Alex Ramosi just about every day in one video or part of an interview. Um, the, I, I watched the, the fitness an- one. I, I watched the, um, the, I mean, even diet one. He talks about diet every once in a while. I saw that the other day. I was like, oh, this has nothing to do with wealth creation or, or starting a business, but uh, it was fantastic. But yeah, it's what well, I was going to say too. Um, the sales training one, he has like the sales training, 30 minute sales training thing. And literally oh. people in the comments are like, this is the best thing ever. Like you don't need to do, go to any of the classes or all this stuff. His, his whole thing is, he said it before too. His whole thing is he wants to make content and give it away for free. That's better than any of the paid stuff. Yeah. I think I know what video you're talking about. I'm trying to find it. I saw it earlier, <laughs> but yeah, there's one, there's one sales one where he's on a stage and he's, he talks about how to like, I don't know. It's kind of like if you're on a sales call, how you break down each excuse someone has. So it's like, okay, you're trying to sell something to someone over the phone or something. You're breaking down each excuse that they have. And then you're also uh, like breaking down each excuse that you make to yourself with anything you're doing in life. So it's like how to, oh yeah, it's this one. I'll link this one. So yeah, I've, this was one kind of like the how to get rich, um, Naval. That one. Where yeah. I was this over and over because it's more than just even if you're not trying to sell a product to someone, this is so good at just like how to helping you get over your own BS. You know, it's that's, really really interesting. Uh, that's the thing about Alex Ramosi is yeah, you're going to learn a lot about sales and marketing, but you don't need to become a sales and marketing person. You don't. It's not about that. Like you can take that and become like a super good uh, salesman, start your own business, know how to market, know how to brand. You can do that. Or if you just want to get better at starting a business or uh, ideals for how to make money or side hustles or how to just talk to people, how to, how to win friends and influence people. He's like the modern day, how to win friends and influence people like telling you this information that's worked and he's got all this stuff to back it up with and, and hundreds of hours of content and interviews. So it's not, like the sales side that used to turn me off because I come from a like an engineering type background and I always like hated on the sales got oh they're here to sell stuff we don't need it you know <laughs> everybody, products technically better like they're just want to so greasy so nasty and it's like this guy 
is a tr like a real salesman. He's like, he represents what a real salesman is supposed to be. And it's not supposed to give you this, oh, they're just trying to trick me. They're just going to get me to buy this thing and it's going to suck and all this stuff. That's not what it's about. Like they're supposed to, like a good salesman is supposed to show you the value of the product and sell you something that is good and can solve a problem. And he is like the truest textbook definition of how to do that in a very like fun and formative way. So it's, the salesman is, has this bad connotation of like, oh, scam, you know, they're just trying to take my money. They're not going to give me anything good. They're not going to help me. They're just going to waste my time. But no, it's like, he's, he's like revolutionizing how to be a good salesman and to sell products like you believe in that will help people. And uh, you use it outside of the sales uh, arena, outside of all this stuff. You can use it in everyday life of how to convince people to do things that can help them like solve their problem. We do it in Hex when we're trying to market and do crypto stuff. You know, Furu talks about this a lot too with, with all the TikTok and all the, you know, call to action. All these sales techniques are trying to get people into the best product that ever existed, right? Like they're trying to get people and you can't just tell people Hex.com, save yourself. Like that's the meme. That's the meme that I, I like to say all the time, but that's not going to get them to go look up Hex probably that like you need to like, you know, get it into talk about the things they care about, relate it to some problem they're trying to solve and make them feel comfortable with getting into uh, this, this type of stuff. And that's you to do that. You have to be a good salesman. Like you have to get it out of your mind that I'm not, I don't want to do sales. I think it's, you know, I think I don't want to like hurt people or harm people or scam people. It's not, you don't have to do that. You can be a great salesman and help people. And that's the biggest thing I got from Alex Ramosi. Yeah, I think same here. Um, he does explain that well, where like, if, if someone has a problem and you know your product can solve it, like, why wouldn't you, you're doing them a favor by selling the product to them because you know it can help them. Uh, so like, there's nothing really scummy about that, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's just how, that, like, it'd be scummy if someone is taking your hard work for free in a way, if that's not what you want. But you like, you know what I mean? It's just, yeah. just, there has to be, I think Richard Hart frames this pretty logically too, where it's like, everything is uh, goods and services, the rest is accounting, that kind of thing. It's like, yep. You know, we have this mutual thing. We transact our things and we were like, oh, this is equal. You know, the value I'm getting is equal for the value you're getting. And, you know, it's a big happy place. It's like the world's a happy place when we're all just logical and, it, oh, it makes sense. And we think like that, uh, I think. Um, but yeah. For sure. Yeah. And he has a really good clip that I posted in there as well in the chat. Um, and it's and it's called Why I Don't Follow My Feelings. And I thought that one was super duper interesting where he talks about how like life is maybe like this line and sometimes we're above the line and we consider that good, good or happy. And then sometimes we're below the line and we consider that bad or sad or whatever. But in reality, everything just is, you know, and it's like, why even pay attention to your feelings? And that's helped me before if I'm feeling giving into anxiety or whatever, then I'm just like, who cares? I'm like, I'm actually like, huh, wait a minute. Why does this matter? Let me just think, what, am, what is the task I need to do? Oh, I'm anxious and I feel, I feel whatever. So I don't want to go to the gym or I don't want to go to the grocery store or whatever. It's like, you just think like, well, why does it matter how I feel if this is something I know is going to be good for me or I need to go do, or like it's something that's, that's good. Like, it's just super interesting to think of life that way. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it, it's, I think, I think it even helps me if I am feeling anxious or, or stressed, then, well, first, I probably have too many desires going on, which is splitting my brain in too many different ways and making me not be able to, you know, cope with one thing at a time. Um, I'm pretty good at multitasking, but I can, I can definitely get overloaded. But I think taking a break and going to the grocery store, taking a walk, going to the gym, you know, going outside for a run, uh, whether it's raining, rain or shine, I, I, I take a run every day. And that just helps me relax, helps me think of, uh, new ideals. I'll come back and I'll be like, I'll be like running faster back to my house. I got to write down this ideal before I forget it. Um, and it's just, uh, there, there's so many different, yeah, there's, there's so many different, um, ways to just relieve naturally do this stuff. Like you don't, like everybody's looking for that magic pill. Everyone's like, oh, just give me the pill. That'll make it happen. <laughs> Our, it's, it's cheating, right? I mean, obviously there's certain cases where you need pills to help you with certain stuff, but 
if that's your first thought, every time you come across a problem is there's got to be something like just solve it for me, peel, solve it for me, other person solve it for me. Uh, you know, then you start blaming people and all, that whole rabbit hole too, but just holding yourself accountable. That's the thing that if you do that, you're going to be able to solve your own problems, but you got to hold yourself accountable and then uh, have the confidence to know that you're, you're going to be able to do it. Like no matter what happens, whatever's in front of you, uh, maybe that's part of your life mission. Maybe that's part of just I don't, confidence. That's, I mean, even the interviews, like when you, when you go want to go work for a company, your confidence can give you, you know, can take you from being uh, six out of 10 to an eight out of 10. If like they, uh, <laughs> they, if, if you just, if you already talk about like you, you already work there, uh, they're, they're probably going to want to work with you. So a lot, a lot of things we can go on that. I, I did want to mention too, uh, with Alex, his famous, uh, quote, uh, make them an offer that they'd be stupid to refuse. Uh, so good. They'd be stupid to refuse. Uh, I, I think that was super meaningful. Uh, one of the first things I heard him talk about, and it really is about value. It is not about scamming people. It is about giving them value. And then you're able to have this asymmetric, um, asymmetric gains from that. Like you can give them value and you can solve their problem and you can still make a ton of money for it. So uh, he, he's been super helpful for, for the whole mindset of uh, wealth creation, uh, how to win friends and influence people. I don't know a better way to say it than that. Uh, he, it's, he's been super influential the last uh, six months. Uh, I've been consuming him. I got a ton more content to go. I have so many interviews I put on my playlist that I haven't even watched yet. Nice. Yeah, I was just listening to him uh, yesterday talking about a guy who walks dogs who makes three grand a day. Yep. Uh, he's a Great good story. podcast too. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really interesting how like in this modern age, you can really do anything. It's just, it it's not like this guy just woke up and was like, I'm going to go walk dogs. And all of a sudden he's making three grand a day. It's like, he built this reputation as a really reliable, uh, good dog walker. He gets clients. They recommend him to other clients. You know, all of a sudden he's in this, he starts walking dogs for wealthier clients. And they're like, Hey, we can trust this guy with our dogs. Uh, we're willing to pay top dollar from to walk our dogs. All of a sudden he's making three K a day walking dogs and he's, you know, busting his ass. Like they were saying in the podcast, but it's like, that doesn't happen overnight. And it's Alex Ramosi has this great quote where he's like, if I said, I'll give you a million dollars, but you have to wait four years. Would you accept literally everyone on the planet would accept. And you could think about that with like all kinds of, I don't know, any kind of side hustle or any kind of building a brand or anything like hex. People just don't want to take the time. Yeah. Yeah. Staking uh, your hex for, for t-shirts. Like if you have a five-year time horizon in, in crypto, uh, I mean, <laughs> that, it's, that's it's what hard I've talked to about. lose unless that's you what I've just buy about recently. stupid. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's something Richard talks about too. If you buy a scam, yeah, it, it's going to go to zero. But if you buy the right product, like I, I've, I've asked this question and I think I, I talked to DCC about it. I might've talked to, um, who did I have on the show the other day? I forget. I've asked a couple people this question. Just, oh, uh, million, million or moon. Like why, why aren't people rich in crypto? Like every time the, the cycle comes around, we're like, all right, it's going to happen. And then every time there's 99% of people come back to the next cycle uh, and they're not rich. And it's just, it's either, I, I think I've narrowed it down to this, either they buy the wrong product, they buy some scam or they buy some, something that's just like, it looks good, but it just doesn't go anywhere. Or they uh, can't help themselves. They trade it all away. They get nervous when ups and downs happen. Uh, they buy too high and then they sell too low. <clears throat> uh, they just, they basically trade. Um, those are the two biggest things I could see of, of why if you can mitigate and stop yourself from being in those two categories, then it's obvious you're going to like, it's obvious you're going to win. There's a path that keeps happening every cycle. You just have to like, it's so hard, the human psychology part to get yourself out of that. And that's what's so great about Hex is if you lock it up, you can't sh screw yourself. You, you can't. <laughs> so that's, that's like one of the craziest innovations, like that everyone just kind of like, oh yeah, I know hex, you lock it up. You can't do it. Well, like really think about it. It is solving this cycle problem. It is solving the problem of you. It is saving you from yourself, literally. And it's not just the buzz buzzword or, or a phrase that we just throw around. If you really think about it, if you believe in the market cycles and you believe that if you don't do those two things that it's mentioned, that you'll become wealthy like everyone else who seems to have done those two things, then 
Hex Hex solves a huge problem. And I think nobody, everyone just looks at the price. Oh, it's up and down, all this stuff. They don't focus. You know, maybe that's what it is. Like 99% of people look at the price and 1% look at uh, the path to, to, to wealth and freedom. I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, I think this is a great point to, to transition into Richard Hart because that's one thing kind of going off your point of people buy something that looks shiny and good but doesn't do anything. I think that's the biggest trap people fall into is what Richard, like Alex Ramosi and Naval and also Richard, they explain life so logically. They explain business so logically that you just, it's like you get a slap in the head. You're like, oh, that makes sense. It's like I'm creating something of value. Someone's getting something of value. We swap money for it. There's nothing unethical really about that. Richard kind of makes the logical point of uh, the only thing that matters is people buying and holding and not selling. Because uh, <laughs> yeah. when you first get into crypto, I remember you know these coins are like, this coin's partnering with a big corporation here. This coin's partnering with big corporation here. And, and you think you think, oh, like, of course, that means this crypto is going to go up from, a, a, you know, under a dollar to thousands of dollars, like a lot of these thumbnails say for all these random coins. And you're you're like, oh, surely, oh, they're partnered with such and such uh, international bank. Oh, they're partnered with such and such big chain. Oh, th it's going to be implemented this way. Oh, of course, you know, when they don't, they're not realizing that First of all, any of these partnerships, what does that even mean? They might have had a phone call with some company and then now they're like, hey, we're partnered with such and such company. And then second of all, it's like that doesn't mean people are going to come buy the token and no one's going to be selling. Who are the holders? Who are the biggest holders? Are they going to be uh, are they going to be selling? Like, do they have the best interest of the coin? Are they just VCs? Are they just people there to make a quick buck to tell you, hey, Walmart just just partnered and now pump the price up retail so you can dump on you like it's like, it's like that is what people fall into with crypto. They're like, oh, this is the the blah 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 coin associated with the blah 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 brand. When it's like all that matters is people buying and not selling, <laughs> and the price goes up. And it's like, what if you designed something that incentivizes people to buy and not sell, and then the average, uh, you know, lock time for that was like over seven years or something. I think that's where we are now or so. And it's yeah. like when you when you look past the watches and the Gucci and the 11 Samato. Like he's being so logical and making so much sense. And he's like, centralized ownership is a good thing. And he's like, why wouldn't you want centralized ownership of, you know, top 1000 Bitcoin wallets own like 90%. Maybe that's something like that. He's like, wouldn't you want someone who's never going to sell to hold all the coins? And it's like, Oh yeah. Satoshi. Huh? I said yeah, Satoshi. Satoshi. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's he's like the logical voice of uh crypto uh in the way that like hermosi and naval are like logical naval i guess is kind of like a mental health kind of logic in a way but also business and then but there's also a lot of smart like business stuff richard hart talks about as well but um yeah what are your yeah. thoughts on everything it's it's uh i mean there's some there's so many projects that are, uh, I think Richard said this before too, scams, but they don't even know they're scams yet. And just when you were talking about like, oh, you know, it's, it's going to a thousand dollars. We're, we got this partnership with McDonald's Africa or, or, you know, just like they keep just throwing all this stuff out here when they want to believe it. It's almost like the Theranos, uh, lady, right? Like, I, I mean, at least I, I truly believe that she thought this was going to happen. She was going to like manifest it. She was going to will this machine to work. And actually right. do what she said it was supposed to do. Uh, and it was just, she just got caught up in that. And I feel like that's a great analogy for most crypto projects. It's like, there's an ideal. Uh, oh, that's actually, somebody gives it criticism. Oh, that's not actually, that's a dumb idea. Or how are you going to make that work? Or it's too hard. Nope, we're going to do it. Because we already named the token. And we already had the you know launch phase. And we had this community. And not going to start over now. And, and just the whole thing is just hoping it's going to work. And then trying to pull out whatever good news possible to keep people in for as long as possible until either a rug pull or goes to zero. Like that's <laughs> literally your options for most cryptos out there. Either you're going to get rug pulled or it's going to go to zero one day. And so it's like either the founders don't even know uh, like what's going on and they're like just going to like go down with everyone else or they're not. But neither situation includes you winning. 
or at least for any like time scale. Yeah. You get an early, you sell at the top, you get lucky, but like, I don't think you should get into crypto to hope you get lucky. And I think most people are in it for that. They're, they're hoping they get lucky. They come across that project that does everything for them. And all they got to do is buy it once and sell it twice. And it's just like, that's, that's not a winning strategy that I've ever seen anyone do. Uh, so why, why would that, why would that work? And then I think 2022, I think it has been the rise of RH maxis. Like I I'm, I'm digging the, the number of people I've seen with RH Maximus in their, uh, in their Twitter profile and the content they produce. And maybe it's also been the doubling of the RH Futters. <laughs> we might've had a doubling there. Uh, definitely not happening. Uh, definitely a doubling there. But I think, uh, and, and again, if people watch the show or, or, or know me have heard me talk about it before, if not type RH, RH Max Maximalism. And you can see a few videos I've talked about it at length, but I think there's a healthy form of maximalism. And I, I want to be in the ecosystem. You got to bet on something. You got to bet on some horse. And I want to be in the ecosystem that I believe has the best chance of winning. And there's a lot of people that seem to believe that. And we have a lot of data behind it. And we have Genius Billionaire Founder. So you don't have to hate. If you want to be an RH Max, you don't have to hate other cryptos. Um, and you probably just talk about them less. Maybe you'll participate less in their communities and stuff. But it's just about, I mean, I'm first RH Maximalist for his ideals. You know, I love SciVive. Uh, his products are just kind of like a manifestation of the things that he thinks is good in the world, like you know, not getting rug pulled, locking up your coins, delayed gratifications, all the mental models around that. Uh, but it's just more about having focus. I mean, my name is RH Maximalist. It's like, I, I don't want to be distracted by shiny objects. Like I want to pitch, I pitch and hold myself. I want to be here and I don't want to look at other, other stuff because I believe I found the best. You go, you go to a hamburger place and you find the best, oh, this hamburger is delicious. You know, great hamburger, five-star hamburger. Afterwards, are you going to go around looking, oh, you know what? I'm, I want a hamburger. Let me find other places that have hamburgers. Like, why would you do that? You just found the best one. You would go back and eat at that restaurant, like at least most of the time. So that, that's, that's the way I look at it, just knowing the mission. And again, a lot of people think, like, I don't, I don't think most people know what his mission is. I think they think yeah. because they see the Gucci, they see the Prada, they think his mission is to be some sort of celebrity, I guess. Like he's only doing that so he can become more popular for his real mission, which, okay, next step, uh, his mission is to get as rich as possible. Well, maybe incidentally, that's just the means to the end. Yeah, of course he's going to, maybe he it keeps gaining wealth over years and years and um, depending on the products he produces and, and the, the fame he gets and all that stuff, but that's not his mission. His mission is longevity research. He wants to literally save people's lives. And how do you do that? You got to fund it. How do you fund it? You got to have a lot of money. It's all means to an end. So his 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 mission isn't to be a celebrity or be the richest man in the world. Um, his mission is to, you know, one day maybe start something like the Heart Foundation and literally, uh, you know, have us living to be 150, 200, whatever it is. And that's powerful. That's, that's why the RH maximalism makes sense to me. Like I love his ideals. His products, cherry on top, and uh, I'm glad they exist. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I think, you know, in my head, I've said, yes, I'm an RH Maximalist, and I present that way. So Richard Hart follows me on Twitter because I never talk about anything else. He retweeted you, you know, twice. Huh? Yeah, he's he retweeted, retweeted me. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Uh, well, I met him in, in London. I don't know if he remembers me, but I went to the Hex <laughs> birthday and met him. That was awesome. I mean, I didn't really nice. talk to him. I just said thanks, got a picture, like a selfie. But um, to me, it's like when I first got into crypto, you know, I'd recommend these things to people. I'm like, dude, it's going to do well. And then it didn't work out well. And then I've just learned too much from I've chased lots of shiny objects, even when I was in Hex. Even I think I'm just bad at it. Like, I love to save you from yourself thing in Hex. And yeah, there's quick pumps everywhere in crypto, but it's like, it's gambling in a lot of ways. And I think there was this movement that I got a little caught up in of, well, get the quick pump to then buy more hex, you know, go buy a scratch off ticket at the, at the, the gas carrot. station to put in your, your savings. Like, you know, it's kind of like, and so I've, I've learned my lesson enough. And then now that I'm public, it's like, I genuinely don't want to 
cause people to lose money. Like I, that is not my goal in life. I genuinely want to like help people. And I, I actually think in terms of crypto, like I was saying, like he's like the Alex Hermosi, the Naval of crypto where he just explains this stuff. So logically, he's like, here's what works. You know, here's the, here's all that matters in crypto is censorship resistance. And you know, whatever else he says, <laughs> I can't remember, but yeah. it's, it's like, half this crap that exists there's no point there's no point to it you don't even need why we even do it on the blockchain in the first place you know um so yeah it's like that's why you know i feel comfortable just promoting his things it's like he has this track record like and and what we can talk about now is some of his early videos that aren't even necessarily because i went back and watched like pretty much all his videos i mean he has a lot of interviews. Um, some of them, the audio sucks, which is a bit disappointing. Like you either have to listen to Richard mm. Hart really loud or only listen to him and you can't hear his uh, guy. Mm. This is really random though. Here, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. It, it seems funny, but I think the video that changed my life the most is this. <laughs> the one with the young the bikini Julia. girl. I remember that. I forget her name. Yeah. Yo, Julia. I yeah, I remember that. I don't know. I mean, there's some stuff like it's just really it's a really interesting one. And it's a lot about like relationships and stuff. But what really helped me in that stream uh, here, I'll link it, is that uh, he talks so logically about just how to fit in in life where he's like, oh, you're at a oh, if you want to fit in, just look at what all the normal cool people are doing and then just copy what they're doing. And you're like. Uh, <laughs> like, oh i never thought of that and he's like oh mm -hmm. you want to have good fashion okay what are the mannequins at the store wearing just wear that and it's like Duh. <laughs> it's like yeah. it just it's so it's so common sense it's just like a slab in the face you're like oh yeah because i don't know i've had like i guess imposter syndrome where you're hanging out with people and you're like oh i feel funny i feel funny and it's like dude everyone is faking to a certain extent, like we're animals and we do things to fit in. It's like the monkey tribe, you know, mm -hmm. all the monkeys start wearing a, a straw on their head. If you're the monkey, not wearing a straw, the other monkeys are going to like, you're getting you murdered. Up. Yeah. You're, you're getting savage. So it's like, there's an event to wear a suit and tie. Well, of course you wear the suit. Do you want to look like a, Oh, but I feel, what am I supposed to do? I'm so anxious for this event. Just wear a suit and tie and stand around. That's what everyone else is doing. Like, it's just, it's just, was so unique in that way um and he talked about uh mm -hmm. you know maximizing your likability which i thought was so interesting i never heard this i'd never heard this talked about because there's this huge maybe it's mainstream of like be unique in your own way and don't care what other people think but then that kind of leads you to this anxiety and depression and then sometimes you can say hey that's everyone else's fault for not accepting me when in reality it's like well why don't you just if you want to be liked which we all do we all want to be liked by people just just do the common sense normal thing and he talked about maybe you're i think the example we used is like oh maybe you're a goth kid and you have your group of goth friends that you go to the bar with once a week and you have your mohawk and your whatever and you really fit in with those people, but that is the only place in the world that you really fit in. And it's like, why not maximize your likability and just like, does that make sense? Like it was just so, it was so like mm -hmm. eye opening to me where I was like, wow, this makes so much sense. Uh, Cause it's yeah. like, it's like, I think South Park, I grew up so much on South Park. They have this funny episode where the goth kids i don't know why we're picking on goth kids nothing against goth kids but basically the goth kids are like yeah we hate all those conformists and they're like all they're sitting yeah. there like smoking their cigarettes and it's, like the the cigarettes. Kids, it's hilarious they're just their own version they're just conforming to their own little tribe and it's like that's what we all are so it's like why not choose the max level of likability that you can and that i just hadn't ever thought of that like that so logically and i was like wow this is so interesting <laughs> Dude, choose max gains like it literally boils down to that like it's it's uh I, I think every year i try to watch i try to rewatch all of his uh early videos like the playlist of um i forget what it's called where the playlist is called of uh, uh it's all the self-help playlist i think there's two different ones but i try to every year i try to watch all of them uh again just to reminisce and just uh you know maybe like reinforce some of the concepts and it's such good stuff how to stop gambling how to be a better friend how to give a good apology it's just really hearty down to earth like good 
like work, like effective ways to, to, to live your life. And I think there are better and worse ways to live your life. Everyone's like, Oh, you know, don't, don't tell me what to do. I I'm, I, I'm happy. I live my life this way. And it's like, okay. But there, you can't objectively measure certain things of like, you know, I, I don't know, like you gotta, you gotta hold yourself to some kind of bar, but yeah. Yeah. These videos. Uh, so yeah. Many good ones. I don't know if people realize like if you just scroll down to the bottom of his videos tab, that's where all his like well, self-help videos are that click, are so click good. On the, click on the playlist. Cause I think there's a couple playlists that make it oh, easier to oh. yeah. fix the world. Yeah. Okay. So fix the world. And then there's, yeah, yeah. Those playlists. Yeah. So that's the ones I watch every year. I try, I try to at least. <laughs> so you can just click on the playlist and just sit down for an hour and put on your TV and just enjoy RH talking about some of the, some of the core foundations of principles of, of uh, how to do cool stuff in life. And how to stop yep. doing bad stuff, like how to stop gambling and online poker. I, mean, I used to love playing poker. And now I'm just like, even before <laughs> that, I think he, he definitely helped. But like even before that, I was like, why, why is it worth it? I'm spending so much time. The ROI is just not there. Probably going to lose. And, you know, I wasn't a terrible poker player either. But I'm just like, there's just got to be more to life than, you know, is my highest calling spending hours online, you know, taking up people's money uh, or vice versa. And it's like, no, it's like, being a day trader is ridiculous. Um, but I, want, I wanted to say too, uh, I guess wrapping up, summarizing here too, I, I think a Naval quote comes to mind that can probably encompass, I, th I think all three of these kings can, <laughs> w would approve of this. I, I think, uh, I love when it, Naval talks about, uh, he says, you know, let's get rich, let's get you rich. And then you figure out what you want, really want to do. Um, I think that's so powerful because anyone out there who's like, I don't know what to do with my life or I'm on this path, but I'm never certain about it. I'm not sure. Or you just, you just lost. Maybe you're just lost. I think getting rich, it's much better to be rich and unhappy than poor and unhappy. So if you have the opportunity and you can do it, do it. And you can do it, in, you know, not by cheating, but do it in a, in a way with you keep your integrity intact, uh, do it. And then, then figure out what you really want. Because you may not know, you may not know what you really want until you own your own time and have the, the flexibility and the environment and just the, the, the calmness and lack of anxiety that your, 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 your normal life may be causing you to figure it out. So I, I love how you just put it, let's, let you get you rich first and then you can figure out what you really want to do. So just all three guys, I think, would uh, kind of encompasses a lot of their teachings. Nice. 